Hi everybody, Dave here from More Style Astrology and also the admin of Mahalo's Astrology. Uh, today I'd like to talk about how I find the upcoming aspects. Um, because normally a lot of people have to look at things like they'll get a calendar, they'll talk about the things that are coming up, and they'll simply look that over. Or if you have astrology software, you might go look at that. Um, but what I found was that it the, th the tools that were available to me didn't really make sense or they were kind of hard to interpret. So for instance, I have the Sirius program and uh, what they have here is they have this thing called the interactive, they have the uh, Astro Clock. The Astro Clock is kind of cool where it shows you, uh, say, a current location, a current time, and you can, you can put it into animation. And so here, if you're looking at this closely, you can see that the time over here is changing by minutes. I can advance a little bit faster. I can try to get up to where I'm going by the hours or the days. So here, the clock spins around, and the complication that I have with this is as things move, things jump around, and, and the spacing that they use to keep the planets, uh, when planets get together and they're going to overlap, the program specifically brings them apart. And so uh, it's kind of this... I never really get to see where the conjunctions are happening with all the objects on the map. And so uh, one of the things that I did, and I did this specifically to help out Mahala with her figuring out where those aspects are, is I wrote this program. And so this one I'm calling the Astro Map. So some of you have already seen images of this map um, online. And uh, what, I, what I've done with this is in the upper right hand corner you'll notice the day so when it loads up it takes today and so today is november 15th um, and it happens to be just after five o'clock uh, pacific northwest time and there's this area down here that are the aspects that are showing up but the complication just like you saw on the wheel with all the red and green lines in the middle it's kind of hard to see all the aspects all at the same time so what I've done here to help myself out is I've toggled those so I can do something like just looking at the conjunctions that are in play right now. And then I can advance it manually by looking ahead in time. And so what, what this map showing us right now is that the moon is conjunct Mars. And if we look over here, we can see moon is conjunct Mars. And we can also see Lilith conjunct Mars. So we've got this triad that's going on right here. Um, and if I forward a couple hours, I can see I can put the moon in the middle. So, you know, come 3 a.m., um, I've got a tighter configuration and I can see the configuration information at the time. And so what I want to do is I kind of want to advance in time and find the locations where uh, multiple planets come together and then see what might be triggering them at the same time. And so some of you might have seen that I put up a report recently uh, about the 26th of November. And so here, if you, I'm going to just advance by the hours. So I'm just, you can watch the moon move and watch right over, uh, what is it? This spot right here. Notice that as I advance by the hours, we get this really nice conjunction happening between the sun, Jupiter, and Mercury. And notice it's come into play here. And so this conjunction, we're looking at the sun, and right about here is where it really starts coming into play. And so the orbs for these, for a standard conjunction, is about 10 degrees. And if you count it on the map here, I think I've got it down to uh, about that location. Okay. And so then we now have this conjunction going on. And what I can do is I can turn off that and I can look and see what are the oppositions. And so at the same time, we see that Venus is in opposition with uh, Uranus. Or I can turn that off and I can turn on triads. So the moon and Venus are in triad. I can turn that off and I can look at squares. So here, what's interesting is we've got a bunch of squares showing up. We've got Mars square Mercury. We've got Uranus square Vesta. We've got Pluto square Uranus. Uh, we've, got, we've got a bunch of activity that's happening right at this time. And let's advance this a little bit farther. Notice that right at the beginning, poof, we had a whole bunch of squares. And then as it got into there a little bit farther, those squares kind of went out of, out of scope. And then we get closer towards the center and we have some different squares coming in. And so uh, what I found was that here's a period of time. So there's a bunch of activity that's happening here. So let's get rid of squares, go back to conjunctions. So we've got these conjunctions. So we know that that's happening. We know that the opposition is here. Um, and 
let's get rid of the conjunctions. We have the opposition. And then let's turn on everything. So here we've got a situation where there's a whole bunch of activity that's happening right at this date. Thus, it is that point in time, which, which is November 26th and 27th. And, uh, and so that, to me, stands out as a fairly significant period of time that people should want to look at, uh, particularly if you're an astrologer. And let's go a little bit farther. Now, now that we know that this is coming up, because this is only uh, 12 days away, let's see if we can uh, take this a little bit further. And so let's go to, let's just look at the map and see what's coming together here. So what I see is we've got a condition right here where Mars and Neptune have come into play and Lilith and Uranus is in play over here. So getting rid of all the aspects, coming back to conjunctions. So we have Mars conjunct Neptune and we have Lilith conjunct Uranus. And so uh, then we want to say, well, what other energies might be in play here? So let's look at oppositions. So there's no oppositions at the time. Uh, Trian. So we have Moon Trian. We have Mercury Trian Chiron. So we have uh, this action right here happening. And get rid of the Trians. Go to the squares. We have Mars and Neptune. So uh, Mars and Nep Mars square Sun. So we have this we have an activity here. So this, this to me would be a power play. So we've got the sun in the square position to this. And so come December 7th, that looks interesting to me. If we go to all aspects, we have all these different things come into play here. So there's a little bit more activity. Um, but the, the one uh, situation of the square, basically saying, get rid of that, go to the square, Mars square sun, and we have that conjunction going on. So let's go back to conjunctions and let's move a little bit farther with this map. So um, here, moving across, Mars, let's see here, um, what else is coming into play? So we're moving into December, going a little bit further, and um, let's go to, can bring that across, let's see if we can bring Mars up to Chiron and see what's in play there. So now we have Sun conjunct Saturn. So now we have a situation that looks interesting again. So we have, we, we're bringing su the Sun into the position of being around Saturn and um, Mars, as Mars still in con conjunct Chiron. So we have a play, we have two conjunctions that are going on here. So looking at that, the Moon's in play, Chiron and Mars. Uh, Eris conjunct Uranus. So we have this other conjunction still going on over here, which is a fairly slow moving one. So get rid of the conjunctions and look at the oppositions. So now we have Mercury in opposition to Lilith, uh, which is here and here. Um, and then getting rid of the oppositions, looking at the triad. So Neptune. So we have a Neptune triad, the moon, which is fairly quick and Mercury. So we have a Mercury one here too. Getting rid of that, go to a squares. We have Mars square Lilith here and here. Um, and so, so basically this seems like a point of activity and, uh, and even going a little bit further with this. So let's get rid of that. Go back to conjunctions. Let's go back to just conjunctions and advance a little bit further. So here now we're going to what's happening come the next, the, the January new moon. So now we have the new moon here, conjunct the sun. We have Pluto in this conjunction. So now we brought the sun right between Pluto and Saturn. So this one becomes even more powerful. Come the new moon of January, I bet people are gonna be writing about this particular time because of the power associated with this situation. And uh, let's see what other aspects. Eris, so we still have this one in play. And let's go, let's get rid of the conjunctions and look at the oppositions. So there's nothing in opposition. Trian, so we have Venus, Trian, Chiron, and then get rid of that, look at the square. So we have Mercury square Mars, Mercury square Mars, which is over here, and Pluto square Eris. 
So we have this here, we have Pluto. So we have a little bit of triggering from Eris. And what we'll probably find is as that goes a little bit further, um, we'll probably find that the sun, as we move it across, <clears throat> would come into contact with the same Pluto configuration. And so uh, basically, that's what I wanted to talk about is that uh, up until the new moon of January, there's a couple of pretty strong power plays that are coming into, uh, that are going to be aligning for us. And so to me, the next thing that really becomes interesting to write about is going to be this new moon in January. Um, and so I'll probably end up writing about that. And you'll probably see other people writing about it too. Anyway, I just wanted to share you this with you, and uh, you probably have a better idea of how I use it. So when you see the map, you'll be able to associate um, what I'm doing with what the picture shows. If you have any questions with that, feel free to send me an email. Uh, email is a more style yoga at hotmail.com. And uh, other than that, if you have questions about this, let me know, and I'll do what I can to answer that, or, or to at least explain what it is that's going on. Anyway, talk to you soon.